Hello everyone! Today we have prepared for you another journey to the Earth long ago. This time we will visit the Carboniferous period. This is a time when the land was a vast swamp and giant amphibians and equally giant insects roamed the land. Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Please, make yourself at home. Now, are you ready? Let's get started. The Coal and Oxygen Ages The Carboniferous period is the second to last geologic epoch of the Paleozoic era. It began about 359 million years ago and lasted about 60 million years. It is also referred to by scientists as the Amphibian Age and it is easy to see why. Scientists have not yet been able to determine the exact time when life made its first foray onto land. But one thing we can say with certainty is that the first forest in history appeared during the Devonian before the Carboniferous period. The forest was composed of primitive plants such as Archaeopteris. And it is thought that it was during this same period that the first insects and other arthropods which came to live entirely on land appeared. Devonian plants were still primitive with weak roots and no flowers or fruits. Angiosperms did not appear until much later. The primitive plants must have been defenseless and gaping in the eyes of modern herbivores. Fortunately, there were not many herbivores at that time and even if there were, they were still primitive creatures. Thus, the plants were not threatened in any way and simply let the wind blow and effortlessly covered the land, scattering their spores. The Earth thus entered the Carboniferous already in a fairly green state. And it was precisely this environment that gave rise to two major features of this period. The first is the record amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. The amount increased gradually and scientists estimate that the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere already reached 35% in the early Carboniferous period. This is a much higher concentration than today. And second, the development of firm soil covering the ground led to the formation of vast wetlands on land by the beginning of the Carboniferous. In these swamps, dead plants did not decay as they do today, but petrified and were eventually transformed into coal. We hope you now understand why this period is called the Carboniferous period. In the early Carboniferous period, the Earth had two supercontinents, your America and Gondwana. They began to collide around 335 million years ago, forming the larger supercontinent, Pangaea. This unification of land masses allowed life on Earth to increase in number and expand its habitat. The Carboniferous was a very warm period, with average temperatures around 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit for most of the period. However, scientific evidence suggests that glaciers formed around Antarctica 323 million years ago and may have expanded and retreated in the same way they do today. It makes one wonder how the Carboniferous creatures, which prefer a warmer climate, would have adapted to such a cold period. Amazing Monsters and Their Habitats From here, we would like to introduce you to some of the amazing creatures that lived in the jungles of the Carboniferous period. The first of these we would like to highlight is the giant arthropods. Flying among the trees is a giant dragonfly, the Meganura. The length of its wings can be as long as 70 centimeters. On the other hand, at the base of a tree, a giant millipede, Arthropleura, which can be over 2.5 meters long, is crawling around in search of food. Another with Arthropleura is a relative belonging to the same species, the giant scorpion, Plumona scorpius. They sometimes grew up to 70 centimeters in length. Furthermore, freshwater lakes, rivers and swamps were inhabited by the sea scorpion, the largest arthropod in Earth's history, which had been born during the Devonian period. 
A creature belonging to the sea scorpions and living in the Carboniferous, for example, was a two meter long Hibertopterus. Such human sized arthropod monsters covered with shells may sound like a description of an enemy character in a video game today, but they really existed at that time. The amazing diversity of these arthropods is truly the result of the Carboniferous period. Among them were even flying cockroaches and bedbugs, which were quite gigantic by modern standards. There was plenty of food and air, and not too many competitors. To them, it was truly heaven, but to the entomophobic, it was a hellish world. We would like to mention a word about air here. Have you ever wondered why our current insects and their allies, such as centipedes and spiders, do not grow so huge? The reason is the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. The larger an animal is, the more oxygen it needs. The respiratory systems of arthropods, however, are more primitive than those of so-called higher organisms and under modern conditions, they cannot supply enough oxygen to grow to the size of Arthropleura and Meganura. This would require an atmosphere with a composition similar to that of 360 to 300 million years ago. Note that arthropods were not the only inhabitants of the vast fern forests of the Carboniferous period. Amphibians, such as Ichthyostega, which were descended from the fish called lobefin, had already appeared in the late Devonian, but they were at their peak during the Carboniferous. One of the largest amphibians of the time was Eogyrinus, a creature that looked like a combination of a newt and a crocodile. Some species were over 4.5 meters long. Eogyrinus lived mainly in the water, but must have acquired the ability to crawl onto land. It is thought that they occupied the same status in the ecosystem of that time as modern crocodilians. Furthermore, amphibians of the Archegosauridae family also successfully increased in size. These included Platypusaurus, which was larger than the world's tallest human and closely resembled a crocodile. An equally stout amphibian, Eriops and Capitus, also appeared. They look like giants compared to today's smaller amphibians. What exactly they ate is difficult to imagine, but perhaps some species were herbivores, while others preyed on insects. In any case, they would have had no trouble finding food. The Carboniferous period was also the time of the birth of reptiles. The small semi-aquatic creature, West Lothiana, found in what is now Scotland, had likely been a transitional creature in the process of changing from amphibian to reptile. And the Helonymus is considered by scientists to be the first complete reptile in history. Also lizard-like in appearance, this is a true terrestrial creature. Other reptiles also lived in what is now United States, such as Petrolocosaurus, and in the Czech Republic, Burfia, and Colostegus. They were all more evolved creatures than amphibians, but at that time, they still remained on the fringes of the natural world. Their time came a little later. One reptile that occupied a unique position among the reptiles of the Carboniferous was Archaeotherus, which lived in what is now Canada. What in the world was so special about it? In fact, Archaeotherus is the organism that, scientists are certain, is the progenitor of the Synapsida, which include modern mammals. This Synapsida dominated the land during the subsequent Permian period. They then lost the competition to the reptilian dinosaurs, but they did not disappear completely. Their descendants, the mammals, began to dominate the world after the famous meteorite impact that had occurred between 65 and 66 million years ago. It was Homo sapiens that was derived from them and came into being. Around at the end of the Carboniferous period, the climate became drier and colder, and a very severe ice age began. At the same time, a series of violent volcanic eruptions occurred in what is now Scandinavia. The release of large amounts of volcanic ash into the atmosphere caused the Earth to become even colder. That concludes today's video. We hope you all enjoyed it. After the powerful cold snap and the so-called 
collapse of the Carboniferous rainforest occurred on the ground, and the vast swamp jungle that had covered the Pangaea continent disappeared over a wide area. All that was left were small forests, scattered here and there across the supercontinent like numerous isolated islands. Then life began its own evolutionary path on each isolated island. Giant amphibians and arthropods gradually disappeared, replaced by reptiles and synapsids. The new era, the Permian, thus begun. But more about this another time. If you liked this video, please give it a high rating and subscribe to our channel. Please don't forget to set your notifications with bell marks so that you don't miss any interesting episodes. That's it, dear friends. We're going to say goodbye for a little while, but we'll see you again in the next video. Farewell!